Obama has ignored us. The media has demonized Mutulu. There is a media hype of the white controlled media which has sold us Obama. I think what we are suffering from is ideological confusion at the moment. That is that we're not clear, we're not thinking clearly, and that we need a context within which to answer the question, is something good or bad? We assume that we have the same goals, but we never say what they are. It's time for us to think and articulate and establish our goals as black nationalists and pan-Africanists. We need vision, we need clarity. Otherwise, we can't answer the question, is it good for African people? Once we agree, then we can have a frame of reference and some ideological grounding. Well, let me just give some definitions or, or you know, give my view of this. Nationalist goal is self-determination. In the spirit of Delaney, Garvey, Malcolm, Amos, it is Pan-African commitment that is the unity of African people worldwide and one Africa on the continent as a basis for African strength. So we are about building a Pan-African world order based on the principles of Ma'at, not in imitation of a European order. Ma'at as ju justice and truth. We need a nation concept, as Dr. Clark told us a black economic program, a cultural program, an independent political organization, independent black media, independent African-centered education financed by us and controlled by us. All of this presupposes, very importantly, an African black identity. Now, if we're not just paying lip service to what I've just said, if we really mean this, then there are some implications for this recent election. I want to touch on just a couple. One, the question of identity. Without clarity on this issue, there is no nationalist movement. There is no Pan-African movement. There's no reason for us to be here as a community. Without racial, cultural identity, which works for us as a people and gives us power, then there is no reason for us to be here. That's the basis for our struggle. But what confusion about identity does is it works for integrationists. It works for assimilationists. It works for Marxists. Obama has said that he is biracial. He has said that he is a mutt. If we accept this, then we disappear as a political entity. No black America? What does that do to four decades of ideological growth, development, and struggle is demolished in one act? want you to remember a series of articles in Newsweek and Time talking about the browning of America, talking about what color is black. There are recent things on the net now talking about Obama not being the first black president, being the first something else president, because is he black or not? Read it. We must read what is being said. We must think, and we have to think about the political consequences of that. A, con a candidate, a candidate, that takes away from my minutes, by the way. I get some more time, OK? A candidate who is said to be a first black, but who does not identify as black and tells us that we are no longer black is, and that in we are existing in a reality that is beyond black and white, beyond race, 
that there's no more racism, this person does not represent us. And so in his winning, we voted ourselves out of existence, if we accept that. Another point is that we can no longer believe in fantasy. That is a reality that doesn't exist. We cannot use a good person approach. It's not about that. It's not about a person. We've been told by Dr. Jeffries that we're supposed to be looking at systems and analyzing how systems work. We're talking about the electoral system, the political system that works on the basis of group interests, the interactions of groups. That's what that's about. And it is about power. And it is about who finances. It is about where you get your support from in terms of your financing. That is what the system is about. It is, by definition, an unprincipled system because you are supposed to compromise on principle in order to get what you think is power. That's what the system is about, not whether a person is good or not. Okay, I got two minutes. Um, okay, importantly. There is a psychological term called role dissonance. Role, R-O-L-E, dissonance. There is a paradox or there is a contradiction in terms that the President of the United States is not supposed to represent a group interest, the interest of any group. That is a contradiction in terms according to what they say so that we couldn't be represented in that anyway. But what is represented under the table is who did the financing? Who chose? We say we chose. We didn't choose. By the time we got to the election, the choice had already been made. Nobody here probably, let's take away from my time, nobody probably heard of him before 2004, but he had a long history in Chicago, which brings me to the next um, warning, the next, what I see as implication of this, and that is the Jewish connection, which must be understood. Because we fought that in the civil rights movement. And I was a part of the Southern Student Movement in Mississippi, and all the time we had to fight for control of our own movement. Now what has happened is that he has allowed that control to come into place because he was picked and chosen. And I could give you the list of names I don't have time to now, but you're going to have to find these things out. You're going to have to now get on the net, read things, think. Don't just listen to rhetoric about how wonderful it is to have these beautiful people there. See where they came from. See what they represent. Are we disconnecting ourselves from Africa? Is that what we're doing? Is that what we finally have come to? I have something to read to you, if I can find it. This is... Um, Oh, let me find this. Here it is. Evidently, a letter was written from, or a request came from Kenya to Obama. Obama answered that request, and I wish I could read the whole thing to you, but I'm going to read something. They were asking for something, okay, asking for help. He said, among other things, our relationship could be imperiled should your foreign policy be at odds with ours. What is that saying? Okay? And he goes on to say, Kenya, now listen carefully, Kenya may be, okay, I think it's chosen, may benefit. Kenya may benefit if it makes certain strategic decisions. We are looking for a base 
uh, in Africa to build our AFRICOM headquarters. We want to choose you. If you do that, then we'll do what you say. It's bad for us as a people if it puts us to sleep and ends this movement. It is good for us as a people if we come together like this and determine our own agenda and keep the movement going. <laughs>